Hi everyone, welcome to Copenhagen in Denmark for the Delo Industry Days 2023. And this morning I am meeting with Rear Admiral Mikkelsen. Rear Admiral, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for your time uh, answering a few of my questions. So uh, until uh, recently, uh, you were the chief of the Royal Danish Navy. What is your role now? My role now is uh, I'm head of, of uh, Navy programs, future Navy programs for the Navy and the defense in Denmark. Wow, very well. So that's, uh, that's related directly to the announcement last year by the Danish government of a major investment in the Royal Danish Navy. Uh, there are now one big program which is ongoing, the image of which is uh, behind us. Exactly. Yeah. From an operational point of view, what can you tell us about this future class of ships? I mean, uh, the ship has not been designed yet. This is an artist impression, but it might be something like that. But uh, the, what we have done now in the program, we, we have made an operation concept that has been uh, accepted by the Chief of Defense and basically that tells the consortium that is in charge of, of designing and, and building the ships when it comes to that, it tells them what operational effects do we need to be able to acquire. And then they come up with a proposal on how can we do that because in that way we have industry and universities with, uh, with their new way of thinking to maybe do it in a different way than dogmatic naval officers like me normally would do. What will be the missions of these vessels? The first ship class is made for the Baltic, uh, the internal Danish waters and the North Sea out to our e e exclusive e e e economic zone. So it will actually de deliver the operational maritime effects that is necessary to uh, cover that area uh, related to um, anti-air warfare, surface warfare, um, underwater warfare also uh, to a, a certain degree. Um, seabed infrastructure has become very interesting also. I see a role for those ships also in that perspective. It could be mine hunting, it could be mine laying and stuff like that which is necessary for Denmark in order to ensure that um, other allies feel secure in coming to Danish ports in case of war and, and by that way bring capabilities to an area of, of operation which could be in the east of, of the Baltic Sea in case, in case that could be a situation. So actually it's a little bit different from, uh, much different from the Cold War when Denmark was, uh, was creating an invasion defense. We were creating a defense so we could not be invaded by the Warsaw Pact. Now, the, now we need to focus a little bit differently. So we need to be able to fight our way through uh, the Baltic and create ensure that the Baltic uh, is, um, has some, some sort of sea control in the Baltic. Uh, that's a lot of uh, mission sets uh, that you mentioned for a relatively compact uh, hull. How do you achieve uh, so many missions on a patrol vessel? The good idea is, the good thing about that is that we're not alone. We have NATO. We have now Finland part of NATO, Sweden becoming part of NATO. We have the Baltic states, we have Germany, we have Poland, we have uh, in, in the, just in the Baltic region. And um, as I see, then we need to figure out how can we in common ensure that the operational effects are delivered. It's not only Denmark that has to deliver the operation effects. We have an alliance and we're part of, of that alliance. And we, be, we need to be able to, to in a smart way, to uh, create those effects that is necessary for the overall aim. Uh, what about uh, blue water or Arctic water operations? Uh, are you looking at this as well, both upgrading current ships in the fleet and uh, looking at the future, like replacement of other ships? I mean, this ship class is, is basically meant for, for Danish internal waters, the Baltic Sea and the North Sea, as I mentioned. But of course, normally a ship will, will last for 30 years and uh, it takes normally 10 years from the first uh, drawing on paper until you have a ship. 
So you can just calculate when the ships are, are overdue. And the ships we have in, in, the, um, in the Arctic region now, the Thesis class, they need to be looked into uh, some sort of replacement in, in the coming years. So that, that will be a project that we will look into when it has been decided politically that we're going in that, in that direction. And, and when that is done, we need also to look into the replacement of the Epsilon class because right now they're 20 years old. So in 10 years time, they are more or less where, where, where they need to be replaced uh, in, in maybe they can plus minus some years. But we need to think that also in, in, in the thinking process now. Uh, think ahead. And then we have the Ivy Whitfield class, so it's a continuous uh, program. Is uh, the current uh, security environment impacting in any way uh, those future uh, ship programs in which you're in charge of? Definitely. I mean, the situation has changed. We all know that. Uh, Russia uh, are more aggressive. More Russia uh, also uh, use other means for warfare, more asymmetric means. Uh, so we need to create uh, ships that has uh, a, a larger degree of deterrence uh, than we have done recently over the last many, many years. Uh, and now we, we need to be able to create that deterrence and that operational military power uh, with, the, with the coming ships in the Baltic region also. Uh, one last question, Admiral. Uh, are you open to cooperation with uh, non-Danish uh, industries for those programs? I mean, uh, basically the consortium now, they are the ones that are in charge of giving us a suggestion on, on a platform with capabilities so that we can deliver those operations and effects that I talked about earlier that has been accepted by the Chief of Defense. And the consortium will reach out to industry, not only Denmark, Danish industry, but also other industries, uh, small, big, medium scale, uh, in order to, to uh, maybe think a little bit differently than we have done recently. So, so uh, I am not, uh, I'm not in reality in charge of what, what industries are we going to address. But of course, there's a strategic issue to this also. There's a strategic dim dimension, uh, for instance, to sensors. Uh, are we going in a European sensor direction? Are we going in a US sensor direction? What are the pros and cons with the different variations? We need to think that into also uh, when, we, when we set the design uh, in, in eight, ten months from now. Very well, Admiral. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. It has been a pleasure.